All right, hey chemistry. So this is a bit of an application to dimensional analysis, but we're gonna look back at chemical reactions and chemical equations. So let's look at the following chemical equation. We have C3H8, which is known as propane, plus 5O2 yields 3CO2 and 4H2O. This is a balanced chemical equation. I'm gonna tell you that right now. There are eight hydrogens, four times H2 is eight hydrogens, three carbons, three carbons, good. 10 oxygens on the left, three times two is six, four and one is four, so it's 10 oxygens on the right. This is balance. All right, remember the unit of the mole way back in unit five? This chemical equation can be read as follows. One mole of C3H8, remember there's a hidden one right here. So one mole of C3H8 reacts with five moles of O2 to yield three moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. Thinking back to dimensional analysis, there are some equalities that we could make here in this chem this balanced chemical equation. I can have one mole of C3H8 um, is equal to five moles of O2. I could see that one mole of C3H8 is equal to three moles of CO2. I can see that one mole of C3H8 is equal to four moles of H2O. Uh, I could also see, and if I want to keep on going and going, I'm not going to do this for all of them, I could see that five moles of O2 equals three moles of CO2. Five moles of O2 equals four moles of H2O. And then I could also see maybe three moles of CO2 is equal to four moles of H2O. All of these are equalities that come from this balanced chemical equation. And just like we said with conversion factors and dimensional analysis, I can turn them into conversion factors. If I wanna go from C3H8 to O2, I could turn that into a conversion factor, right? If I ha I could write these as fractions, I could say one mole of C3H8 over five moles of O2, or I could write that as five moles of O2 over one mole of C3H8. If I start my problem with C3H8, I'd probably wanna use this equality to help me convert between the two. So we're going to use these equalities as conversion factors for a little bit of a setup here. So it says we will see using these equalities with dimensional analysis to solve for some chemical quantities this is what we will see. So here's an example of what you will see. If you have two moles of C3H8, how many moles of O2 will you need to completely react? And so translated, you could think of this as the way that we gave you problems to review. Convert two moles of C3H8 to moles of O2. So I need an equality between C3H8 and O2. One mole of C3H8 is equal to five moles of O2. And I get that from my balanced chemical equation. And I could write conversion factors now. This is my equality. I could write my conversion factors. I could either write one mole of C3H8 over five moles of O2 or five moles of O2 over one mole of C3H8. And so now I have to, sorry, that I was out of camera. Now I have to figure out which of these do I want to use for my conversion factor. Well, it says if you have two moles of C3H8, how many moles of O2? So my given was two moles of C3H8. And I want O2 in the end. I want moles of O2. So I'm going to say moles. Now, which of these conversion factors am I going to want to use here? Is it this one or this one? Well, if I start with C3H8, I know it, and I have moles of C3H8, I'm going to have to have moles of C3H8 on the bottom. The only one that has moles of C3H8 on the bottom is this one on the right. 
And so I'm going to put this equality or conversion factor here now. One mole of C3H8 is five moles of O2. And so now I could do straight up math. I could do two times five divided by one. Two times five divided by one. And this is 10 moles of O2 is needed to react. And doesn't this make sense? If this equation, if this equation says one mole of C3H8 reacts with five moles of O2 and it yields three moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O, if I had two C3H8, I would have twice as much. So I'd have 10 O2, I'd have six O2, and I'd have eight H2O. This will always be a constant ratio. It'll be a one to five to three to four, two to 10 to six to eight. I could even do three to 15 to nine to 12, right? Those ratios will be constant. Let's try one more. It says, if you produced 11 moles of H2O, how many moles of O2 must have reacted? So the question is asking, convert 11 moles of H2O to moles of O2. Well, I have an equality between H2O and O2. That was up here. I have five moles of O2 for every four moles of H2O. So I could say five moles of O2 is equal to four moles of H2O. And then I could write both my conversion factors from here. Either I'm gonna have five moles of O2 over four moles of H2O, or I'm gonna have to use four moles of H2O over five moles of O2. And so then the question asks, if you produced 11 moles of H2O, how many moles of O2 must have reacted? Convert 11 moles of H2O to moles of O2. So I start with 11 moles of H2O. And like any other dimensional analysis or conversion problem, whatever I start with, I have to have on the bottom. So moles of H2O. And the only conversion factor that has moles of H2O on the bottom is this one. Five moles of O2 over four moles of H2O. So I'm gonna have five moles of O2 over four moles of H2O. And so now I could do my math. I'm gonna do 11 times five, which is 55. You multiply the top and then you divide by the bottom. 55 divided by four then is 13.75. So I'll do 11 times five, which is 55. And then that 55 divided by four, I get 13.75 moles of O2 is required. And that will be my answer there. I have that answer up here too. Okay, so this is a bit of a sneak peek about how dimensional analysis is an application for chemical equations and trying to solve for chemical quantities. This is going to be the next thing that we look into.